Good evening. My name is Garen Bailey, and welcome to the inaugural performance of Classic Cinema Challenge. This is Boston Sci-Fi's attempt to find out what is the worst film possible out there. And joining us today are two esteemed critics from the Boston area. One is Dan Kimmel, and the other is Ed Semkis. And Dan, if you could be so kind as to just give us a quick bio sketch of who you are and what is the meaning of life. Oh, well, I've been a, a film critic since the 1980s, uh, as Ed. Uh, I guess the, the, the one thing, besides being a big science fiction fan, I'll mention two, two credits. I'm the author of Jar Jar Binks Must Die and other observations about science fiction movies. And I do a column on classic science fiction films for a space and time magazine. And Ed? Well, I think I have a professional film critic since 1975. First film I ever reviewed was The Reincarnation of Peter Proud. Terrible movie. It was supposed to be remade. I wish it was. Could have been a better film. Uh, I don't have my book with me, but I, I wrote a book about pro wrestling. Does that help? Um, and I review right now. That's fiction. For, uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, I review right now. I'm the national critic for Gannett Media. All right. So let me, let's, let's tell folks what we're doing here. So this is called Classic Cinema Challenge. And what we're going to do is we're going to take three films. And our three films tonight are, go are going to be Plan 9 from Outer Space from 1957, Howard the Duck from 1986, and Zardoz from 1974. And tonight we're going to have our critics and we're going to discuss, and by all means, join in within our chat column. And we're going to discuss the pros and cons of these terrible films. Are they truly bad? At the same time, we are going to be posting a link to our survey monkey where you will be able to see, you'll be able to vote on which one you think is the worst one. And at the end of the evening or tomorrow morning, we will announce the winner of the first round because there are going to be three rounds. There's going to be another round on uh, November 11th and another round on November 9th. And then on January 13th, we will put them all together and for all three round losers, and we will find out what is the worst science fiction film of all time. And we will announce that at the beginning of SF 46 on February 10th. So that's the, that, that's the layout of what we're doing here. Um, and I thought we'd start off with let's playing a the trailer from Plan 9 from Outer Space. Obviously, a quick technical difficulty. <laughs> there it is. Is the sound? There, I, I don't believe the sound coming off the trailer. Why don't, why don't we do the dialogue ourselves? Well, it, do we really need to do the dialogue? I mean, someone's been murdered. They're dead, you know? Um, <laughs> Rockets, missiles, jets cannot stop their death ship. What earthly power can stop this terror? For a glimpse of things to come, see this blast of screen suspense. Or it could be happening right now. Well, that is a lovely, lovely trailer. Really well edited, well crafted, just like the movie. 
So Dan, tell me, what do you think? What what why is Plan Nine worthy to be on this, you know, disgusting list of bad movies? Well, I, Plan Plan Nine is considered the, probably the, the worst film ever made, or one of the worst films ever made. And this was when um, I forgot the the the, 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 the Wallachinsky uh, book, uh, the Golden Turkey Awards. You know, that's that's what brought this film back and made people want to see this awful film. I'm actually kind of sympathetic to it. It's a terrible movie. I it's I, I won't defend it. But if you watch it after you watch Tim Burton's movie, Ed Wood, Ed Wood being the director of the film, uh, it's actually a very touching film. You see, it was a movie made by a filmmaker who was reaching far beyond his limited talents. Um, and uh, even it has so many things wrong with it. Bela Lugosi, it is sadly Bela Lugosi's last film. And Lugosi, I believe, died while they were making it, and they had to replace him with, I think it was Woods Chiropractor, who was much taller and thinner than Lugosi. Looks nothing like him, and so he walks around with, with the king the whole time he's there. Um, you know, you, you brought up a point there that I, uh, I always like to talk about. I mean, we seem to relish these lousy films, and, and, and Ed, I'm wondering if you could comment on this. Is it the fact that we see failure so strongly that we like it so much and that we feel comfortable with the idea that somebody else failed and put their failure on a screen so we could laugh at it? Is, is that part of the shouting for you thing kind of thing? I, I don't think Wood thought he made a, a bad movie. I, and I, I want to, I need to, to uh, give you some transparency here. I've never made it all the way through this movie. Um, I've tried about a half a dozen times. It's only a, an hour and 19 minutes long. It's really hard to watch. It's bad acting. It's bad writing. It's bad directing. It's bad editing. Um, Wood did the, he, I think Edward produced, wrote, directed, and edited it. And somebody else did the bad cinematography. Um, yeah. I've never had fun my time. He did write it. I, I didn't, I, I've never had any fun. It's not a spoof. It's, it's serious. And it's, as I think Dan used the word off. Oh, you broke up there a little bit, Dan. I didn't really get that last part. Oh, it's okay. I'm sorry. It's a great movie. I've seen it 15 times. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I, I, a point that I, I, I made once is like when you see Citizen Kane or Lawrence of Arabia or 2001, you go, this is a work of genius. I can never aspire to that. You see Plan 9 from Outer Space go, I could do better than that. So is, is that part of the appeal? I mean, I'm just really, you know, what, what, what is the appeal? I mean, let's, let's be honest about it. Plan 9 has got this uh, status in the, the cinema world as being the worst film ever. And it's not, there's probably other films that are worse, but it is considered a really bad film. And I'm wondering why we love to look at the train wreck. I think uh, one of the things about this film is it has zero production values. And you kind of get a kick out of that. I mean, it, we're talking about the, the paper plates for the flying saucers. We're talking about the fact that I, I forget the hero's name, Troy, Trent, Trent, I think it was. Uh, it, there's a scene in his house and the camera goes and the actors and the cameras go from room to room. And the same furniture is in every single room because they didn't have a budget for it. <laughs> I think we kind of get a, it just rearranged a little bit. I, I, I can only say we get a, a, a very darkly humorous kick out of watching this, this train wreck. So if we got anybody out there who's watching us right now, by all means, go to the comments section and start asking us questions about what we think about what's going on with this film and, or anything else that we could talk about. Um, I, I, one of my favorite quotes comes from the sci-fi movie page about this, which called it, hopelessly inept and incompetent, um, which I think is really kind of what it is. But then I was also reading a, like a New York Times review where the, the guy was like making all the excuses of the wor world for the earnestness of Edward D. Wood Jr.'s attempt at making a film. Is earnestness a, uh, a strong enough reason to like a film? And how many earnest films out there are bad? Yes, as I said, I had seen it 
many times. And then after I saw Ed, the movie Ed Wood and, and I watched it again, I actually find it kind of, kind of touching. You could, like I said, you could tell he, Ed Wood wasn't trying to make a bad movie. It was, this was the best he could do. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully people can do better, you know, maybe we they get an iPhone 12, you know. Um, the next oh, film I? on our list, okay, uh, was a really popular comic in its day. And I have to say, I love the comic. And I think I actually have to do Howard the Duck, and it was a large group of presentation. And here's the trailer from Howard the Duck. A world, a world almost exactly like ours. This is where he lives. He's 27 years old, single but searching. Favorite sports, windsurfing and Aikido. Favorite pastimes, cigars and sex. He has everything except fulfillment. And then one night, it happens. Hey, good buddy, are you home? He has a very sudden midlife crisis. He lands in Cleveland. Do you know why you were sent to me? Listen to me, small visitor. I can explain how you got here. Maybe you're here for some greater purpose, some cosmic cause. Here, he's forced to reassess his career goals. You went to med school? To explore new relationships. <laughs> to redefine his self-image. I'm sorry, we don't allow pets on the premises. To adjust to a changing lifestyle. I pull it up! Until he discovers just who he really is. Oh, no. A duck in big trouble. That's a duck, man. Howard the duck, trapped in a world he never made. Coming from George Lucas, a Willard Hike film, a Gloria Katz production. You know, oh. it's got good production values. It's got a relatively good cast. I mean, Tim Robbins is in it. Jeffrey Jones, before he got banished from Hollywood, is in it. Um, and like I said, I love the comic book, but boy, what a disaster. Ed, what do you think? I think you're right. That's the first thing I've you've said tonight that's absolutely right. I had never, um, sorry, I had never read the comic book. I hadn't even heard of the comic book. And I went in knowing Lucas had produced it. Of course, he had just done Labyrinth, too, and I didn't really like that movie. But he went in, uh, as you said, good cast. Leah Thompson was in it. She had... I think just done uh, Back to the Future, and uh, she was in this movie as as uh, Howard Howard T. Duck's uh, girlfriend. But I don't think the the, uh, the trailer really explained it well. He was sent to Earth to from another planet, I believe, to stop an alien invasion, something like that. And and she became his first friend. She became his girlfriend. And I will say she looked good in leather. But um, Everybody else just had bad parts. Tim Robbins had a terrible part as a lab assistant. He, could, I think he's a pretty good actor, but he had nothing to act with. Jeffrey Jones was actually pretty good as a, as a guy who was taken over by some alien force. Uh, he was good for a while, but the dialogue just kind of destroyed this film. Uh, the bad duck puns. And I believe uh, Howard the Duck himself uh, was played by eight different actors, some of the men, some of them women. I don't know. The movie just was all over the place. And again, like the first film we talked about, not very entertaining. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, well, I haven't seen it since it came out, and I remember it was pretty bad at the time. But if I, even looking at this now, I, I think that this, the, you talk about the production values, uh, the special effects are, are, you know, are just... Even at the time, it was you know obviously somebody in a duck suit, uh, you know maybe with like with animatronic eyes or something. Uh, I wonder if they did it today with, with a better script, uh, and they did it with CGI, whether they could pull it off. Because I don't know. You know you know, it's like a kid in a, in a Halloween costume. Yeah, I, I, and I wonder about the casting of Leah Thompson as well. I mean, I. Maybe it's, maybe it is just the script, but you know, I just 
was totally turned off by it. And I really wanted to like this film when it came out. Um, and, and then you look at it, things, things like, you know, John Barry did the music, you know? I mean, they, they, they spent some serious money on it and it doesn't yeah. show up on the screen at all. No, you know, you but the, 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 there is one. Uh, go ahead, Ed. Oh, you, you, we, I was going to say, the say one good thing for, about for, this. Uh, Dan, who do you want to go? Uh, Sorry. One good thing. Yeah. The one good thing about this is it provides the punchline to the great short George Lucas in Love. Uh, which, yeah, if, if, which if people that. haven't seen, I recommend. It's, well, it's a, one, that, it's a great. Uh, the, the punchline is at the very end. Somebody, somebody comes into his dorm room with a doc. You know, he has, he has an idea for his next next project. <laughs> well, you know, I think one of the, one of the pieces that always gets back to me when I think about Howard the Duck is is that George Lucas kind of lucked out. I mean, he, he made American Graffiti, which was based on his on his, on his experiences in the Valley, San Fernando Valley, and then he made yeah. Star Wars. But after that, he really has not, he's not been very good with dialogue. And the, a lot of the films just don't really do well. You know, they just don't click. So he made all his money in his first couple of things, blew his wad then. And I'm wondering whether or not, you know, he's part of the problem with this one. That as executive producer, he made some bad decisions. And it does go really back bad. to the script. It was directed by a guy named, I believe is pronounced... Willard Hoyk. He only made three Hike. or four. Hike. Is that how you Hike. It? Yeah. He actually co-wrote American Graffiti. He actually co-wrote uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Both of those films actually had pretty good scripts. I don't know what happened to this one. Um, I, 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 I actually found the review I wrote of it back in 1986, and I wrote at the end of the review that I was um, I was embarrassed to watch it. <laughs> that was my feel about the whole thing, and, and I think the audience felt the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting what you say about uh, Garen, what you say about George Lucas, because uh, one of my my very few screen appearances is in a documentary called "The People versus George Lucas," which is about the love hate relationship the fans have with him. Because there's a lot of positives, there's a lot of negatives. It's it's really kind of you know like in the in the balance. Well, I, I, I think this is that, definitely one of the negatives. Yeah, no, no, I think one of the is he's created an empire of great special effects and he's brought a vision to what films could be. Yes. Uh, and I think that's a positive thing. I think as a artist or as a craftsman, um, I think it's 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 less. It's the you know the answer is much less than that. Um, I we do know that it was award winning film. It won four Razzies that year. For best picture, <laughs> best play, best new star, which I have to assume was Howard, and best supporting actor for Tim Robbins. So, yeah, that's it. but you know, one, one thing we can look at though is that you know a bad movie does not necessarily kill a career. Look at Tim Robbins. Look at Leah Thompson. You know. Yeah. Anyways, do we have another comment? Nope. Nope. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, let's 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 move on to the next film, which is we oh, yeah. know that Ed likes. So hopefully we'll have a very spirited discussion about this, and that is the John Borman Zardoz made in 1974. And rather than showing you the trailer, we're going to show you the opening sequence for two minutes of Zardoz oh, yes. because. It really is kind of special. <laughs> been raised up from brutality to kill the brutals who multiply and are legion. To this end, Zardoz, your god, gave you the gift of the god. 
The gun is good. The gun is good. The penis is evil. The penis seeds and makes new life to poison the earth with a plague of men, as once it was. But the gun shoots death and purifies the earth of the filth of brutals. Go forth and kill. Zardars has spoken. So Zara has spoken, and and Ed, you will now speak to tell us why Zara has spoken. I'm sorry, I missed that. I'm sorry, Karen, say it again. I asked, I you know, I said Zardas has spoken, and yeah, now sorry. it's your turn to speak and defend and I will, Zardas. And I, will, oh, I know Dan does not like this movie. He even pronounces it wrong. He calls it Zardos because I think he fell asleep when he first saw it. And he doesn't really know what it's about. This is not <laughs> a terrible movie. This is not a great movie. This is an absurd movie. Uh, the, the the dialogue is pretentious. However, the visuals are pretty striking. Uh, there are some, actually, for the time, 1974, some pretty good special effects. This was the movie that John Borman made right after Deliverance. <laughs> I, I don't know where this came from, but the rumor was he was supposed to be doing Lord of the Rings. He was going to write and direct and produce Lord of the Rings, and it fell through at the last minute. So he sat down and he wrote and directed and produced this. Um, the thing is, I've seen it many times. I don't really know what the heck it's about. But on, uh, just saying that, I also don't know what any of Christopher Nolan's films are about. So they're about equal for me. I like this movie. Uh, all right. So do you think that there is some shred of uh, criticism that could be leveled at this film uh, that, you know, it's about American culture and its love of guns? Dan? No, I was thinking, I'm texting this one at you. Oh, had. you picked that? There was a very subtle point. You picked up on that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't really defend it. I know that this is an idiotic movie. Um, I, I've tried many times to tell people the plot of it, you know? I, and I, I honestly can't. I don't know what Sean Connery is doing here in his red diaper either. This was a. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I suppose he made this. This was, I think, a couple of years after he made. I don't remember what his last James Bond film was. Uh, but I guess he needed money, and Charlotte Ramplin needed money, and and so they were offered money to do this thing, and, and maybe John Borman was doing psychedelic drugs at the time. I, I'm sorry, I can't really defend it, but I like it. That's all right, all well, we'll, we'll, we'll let you off the hook for a minute now, but but Dan, you you take over and trash this thing. Okay, well. First, I'm not going to make fun of Ed because I have my guilty pleasures too. Uh, you know, I like the 1967 Casino Royale, which is a total train wreck. Uh, but this movie is a really stupid movie. I was in college when it came out, and I remember going with my then girlfriend, and we got to the end, and I'm not going to spoil it for the people who want to run out and go see it now. But when we got to the, the punchline, what? What's the secret of this film? I'm going, you have got to be kidding. It's absolute absurd is the word for it. I, I thought it was just nonsense. Well, it, just, it, work. Uh, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> what about this? This, this, this I, mean, I read some reviews from other people before we, you know, before we did this, and they were talking about uh, that it is a rather experimental vision that you don't see and as such should be commended for its you know audacity yes no 
I'm, um, I'm waiting for Ed to fall into this trap and say yes. Experimental vision. I, I, no, it's, it's it's nuts. It's just nuts. <laughs> And, 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 and I think, it, I think it's funny that, that Ed likes this film, and the film that he most hates is Liquid Sky. Oh, which which truly is an experimental vision, and also possibly incoherent. Yes. Oh, incoherent. That, incoherent is a very good word for this movie. I I, I can't come to grips with, with but I, I've never put this on my worst films list. Just because I enjoy it, um, uh, I enjoy seeing Sean Connery act ridiculously. I enjoy the nude scenes. What can I say? I enjoyed some of those. I think it may be uh, also a comment on religion, how uh, religious tribes get people to do things that they want to do on the quote unquote serious side of the film that sneaks through every once in a while. There are good people in it. Um, I, I couldn't quite tell the difference between the different groups. We had the uh, the apathetics and the brutals and the execute no the, the the executioners. Does anyone remember what they were? The exterminators. But it was also the immortals. And you know, I, I think my favorite moment in this film that really really solidified to make me a fan of it was when Sean Connery puts on a wedding gown. <laughs> I don't, you know, in, in my, I don't know why. Yeah, in in my column for Space and Time magazine, I look back at old films, often picking films that played the marathon, and so movies like Soylent Green and Rollerball, which are around that era, um, I taking a fresh look now, I actually found that there was some substance to it. I I liked them more than I remembered. So maybe if I looked at this today, I would feel differently. But I just I just remember it as a very silly film. I mean, just, just, just looking at it, I, I, I can't take it seriously. All right, so let's see. <laughs> we have on our list of being featured are Land Nine from Outer Space, Howard the Duck, and Zardoz. Now, if you guys were going to go vote, which we do on our Survey Monkey, and you can see that coming up on our screen in just a second. Which one of these would you vote for of the three of these? Which one is the worst? Uh, Dan? Plan nine. Plan nine. Yeah. Plan, plan nine. nine. Okay. I mean, I, I kind of like would think I would, I would go with Howard because I just was so disappointed with that. But that's me. No, but you see, the, the, the thing with, with a, a bad film, especially since the idea is we're going to pick one to have as part of the festival, is you want something – that's so bad it's entertaining. And and Plan 9 actually has some things that you just, you, you start laughing at it. And uh, Howard the Duck and, and Zardos are, are just like, like one of the upcoming films, you've got Battlefield Earth. It's like, you wish it was so bad it was funny, but it really isn't. You know, interesting, yeah. well, Plan you know, Nine. I don't know what that extra where it was that, that I saw talking about the virtue of Battlefield Earth. But that leads us into into my, my next thing that I want to talk about is the, the upcoming episode. And our next episode will be on November 11th, where we will we be going with Battlefield Earth, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, and they saved Hitler's brain. And then on uh, December 9th, it'll be Santa Claus conquered the Martians with the inimitable Pia Zadora, Batman versus Robin with nipples, and Leonard Part Six, six with a criminal. Um, and then after that, we'll do a uh, complete um, uh, uh, roundup of the three of them and pick out the worst one out of the all. Um, anyways, uh, I want to uh, also uh, talk to people about that uh, upcoming in the next week or so. We're going to be doing a Facebook town hall where uh, I will be open to any questions about the upcoming uh, 46th Boston Science Fiction Film Festival and Marathon. And I'll, I'll do this to my guests. If you have a quick question for me right now, uh, I could, I'll, I'll answer and give you a teaser for what's going to happen at the town hall. Dan, Ed, you got a question for me? How, how Are you going to be doing this virtually? How are you going to make this come up? It's going to be a virtual film festival. Yes, we're going to be we're, we're, we're taking it from ten days to five days. It'll be December or February tenth to the fifteenth. Uh, will you be showing Plan Nine from Outer Space? 
Maybe, maybe not. I don't know yet. If, if it, I have an announcement <laughs> to make about that, though. You know, it was remade in 2011 as Plan 9, and it only came out on video, and it got just trashed more than the original even did. And one actor, I'm not going to come up with his name, was in both films. Wow. Played a cop. Nice. Ah. Well, that there, there, that's that's for your trivia contest. So, anyways, yeah. uh, so anyways, uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, thank Dan, Dan, thank you very much for joining. Ed, thank you very much for joining. We appreciate it. Anything you guys want to plug? Oh yeah, here I, I found my book. Okay, hold it steady. I got my book. All right, we have now done the appropriate and obligatory. Plugging of the books, which is now going to be some sort of ritual. Um, anyways, next time we're going to be, like I said, we're going to be doing Battlefield Earth, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. They saved Hitler's brain. It'll be on November 11th. In the meantime, go vote at Survey Monkey. Again, the uh, link is going to be popped up on the screen here. Vote in real life. Pardon? Vote What's in real that? life, too. In real life. There's an yeah. election coming up. Yes, there's an election coming up, and you know what? Everyone better vote, and they better vote the right way. And don't vote. I, I, we will. I, I can't tell you how disappointed I am in the American democracy, but that that that's my proselytizing right now. Anyways, thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next month. This is Garen Daly for Classic Cinema Challenge. Good night. Good night. <laughs>